So I've had an Amazon gift card balance burning a hole in my pocket for a little while now and decided to do what I do best and that is buy leather tools online that I don't particularly need right now. So I went ahead and purchased this little uh, manual tabletop press. The official name is the Leather Hole Punch Hand Punching Machine Manual Press Puncher Punch Tools for DIY Craft Punching Holes. Now that is a solid SEO title right there. Anyways, um, something like this, if you're not familiar, would more traditionally be used for um, pressing a stamp into your leather by using the little uh, handle here, and this would press down and mark your stamp into your leather. But uh, more recently, a lot of people have been using them to um, rig up their stitching chisels and their just regular hole punches into these um, chucks here and then punching all of their stitching holes that way. So I decided I thought it'd be cool to see how that works. So I'm gonna to put together a little experiment here. I'm going to do punch, I punched the holes on this little card holder here. One side I just did by hand using the mallet and the uh, diamond stitching chisel here. And the other side, I'm going to use the manual press here. And then I wanna compare them and see um, you know, how, how easy it is to maneuver, how straight the holes stay, what the exit holes look like and the entrance holes, and just overall ease of use and time saving ability, if there is any. Okay, so this little um, set that I got here comes with a bunch of different things. Uh, one is the overall piece and the drill truck here. It also comes with a little punch pad that you put on top of this metal. You don't want to punch directly on that metal there. And then um, your tools to um, shift this up and down on this post here to get the correct height and then tighten the chuck. So what you can do here is any, any size tool here that can fit into this chuck, you can use. So let's do this um, just regular sti uh, stitching chisel here. So what you do is just fit it up there, kind of adjust this, you tighten the chuck. Oops. I'm not, this, this has holes so you can drill this into the table, but I don't know where I'm putting it yet, so I'm not drilling it anywhere for the time being. So then you tighten your chuck, and you can lock it down. like that and then you can see this how this works here just like that and now you have your chisel ready to roll so as I mentioned I already went around one side on with my um, chisel and just hand did it by hand so now I'm going to try it with this thing here I'm not going to worry too much about where I start and come off here. I'm just want to see how it works. So I'm going to line it up with my stitching line. Okay, back in action here. Sorry about that. So I did one punch. I'm going to put a piece of leather under here and then punch down. I think the glare off of here is too much. So I'm just going to keep moving down the line here. Okay, looks good. But here is where the first annoying thing is gonna be if you're using something like this. Now that I'm at the corner, I have to switch to a two prong. So if you're doing anything that has close corners like this or a lot of curves, this is gonna be obnoxious. So let me switch this out and continue on.
<laughs> so going around the curve is definitely not easy. Um, it's also not easy that this thing's moving around so much. But let's figure it out here. Okay, so I'm around the corner now, and that was a real pain in the butt. Not easy. So now, back to a straight part here, now I have to switch it out again. Okay, time to swap out again. And last swap out. Okay, all done. So now, let me do a little close up and we'll look at our holes here. So I marked the side that I did with the hand stitching on with the H, and then the side I did with the machine with the M here. And on the outside, it looks very consistent, like the hole sizing looks consistent. The corners actually look nicer with the machine one than I did by hand. The lines look pretty straight though. And then on the inside, there is some waving like in my, in my hand stitch version here. I can see that I went off track a little bit when I was punching, so I didn't punch through. I wasn't holding the iron perfectly straight when I knocked through a couple over here. This is pretty straight. And then over here, I did really bad. I didn't stay on line there. Uh, with the machine side, it's pretty accurate all the way around because I know that putting this on here and then pushing down with this was completely straight and flat every time. But the exit holes and the entrance holes look very similar. So now I'll stitch both sides up and then we'll look at the final result. Okay, so I just went ahead and finished stitching. Now let's look at the uh, result here. So I'll start with the outside. This is the hand punch side. Not too bad. And here's the inside of the hand punch side. Again, not terrible. Uh, I went a little bit too far into the corner here when I was punching through, but that happened. And here is the machine punch side. Here's the outside.
and here's the inside. This one I will say is much more uniform keeping on that 1 8 inch uh, stitch line. Even around the corner it's pretty much dead on. Not too much difference in the appearance of the stitches though. That looks pretty, uh, pretty uniform through both sides. Okay, so my conclusion after the first time of using this, um, if you are in a situation where you have to work quietly, like you live in an apartment, I worked out of an apartment for five years when I was getting started, and I had neighbors above me, below me, you know, side to side, and I couldn't spend all day and night hammering, stitching holes without being a jerk. So if you're in a situation like that where you have to work quietly, this thing is a great investment. Um, it's pretty much dead silent when you're punching all these holes. And I can also see that as you, if you, if you use it more and more, you'll probably get a lot faster and better at maneuvering it than I was doing that demo. That was the first time I've ever used something like this. Um, however, if you don't have that restriction and you can kind of just do what you want, I don't see how this thing would really improve your leather work. I mean, outside of just using it for what people traditionally do, which is to mark stamp, uh, maker's mark stamps into the leather, that's probably the best way to use it. Um, but using it with the stitching irons, unless you have one of those stitching irons that has like 10 or 12 prongs on it and you're just doing like a, a long section, maybe like a belt or something like that, and you just want to save your fingers, okay, uh, maybe that would be a good use for it. But other than that, I would just stick to the traditional using it to um, use the maker's mark and stick with your regular hand stitching method. So if you have any other questions, uh, I guess about the machine I have here uh, that you want answered before maybe buying one, uh, shoot me a, a comment or an email and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. And thanks for watching.